Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing one of our favorite fall activities, which is planting our garlic. But before we get into that, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who subscribes and watches our videos because thanks to you guys, we've hit a big milestone and we now have 10,000 subscribers on this channel, which is pretty big for us. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So thank you to you all. And I was thinking we should do something special since we have hit 10,000. And I was thinking that maybe we would do a Q&A video in the next few weeks. So if you would like to leave us a question for us to answer, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. And also whenever this video goes up, I'm going to post on IG stories and you can also ask us a question through there if you want your question to be private and not have your name on it. Because I think if I do one of those like ask me something things on Instagram, maybe it won't have your name. I don't know. I've never done it before. But if you don't want your name to be public and you don't want to leave a YouTube comment, you can always go on Instagram and ask us a question there. And I'll pull questions from both of those places for our future a Q&A video and you can ask us anything about our homestead, our garden, our animals, or just like personal questions if you want. We haven't really talked too much about our personal lives I don't think on this channel and I don't know if people are curious or not but if you are feel free to ask us anything. Nothing is off limits. I can't promise that I'll answer everything but at the very least we won't be offended if you ask us. So yeah just go ahead and drop us a question and this video is only going to happen if you guys actually ask us things. If nobody asks us anything and you guys don't care, then whatever, we won't do it. So this is on you. Ask us something if you want to hear the answer. Thank you again for helping us reach this big number. And let's get into the project for the day, which is going to be planting our garlic. So if you've seen any of our previous garlic planting videos, this one might not be too different. We are basically going to be doing the same process. And I don't think we're going to be doing anything too differently this year, but that's because because it's worked out really well for us in the past. I think we always have a pretty decent garlic harvest, so clearly whatever we're doing is good, so I'm not gonna change that. And the garlic we're gonna be planting today is the same variety we have planted for the last few years. This is Chesnock Red, it's a hard neck garlic, and it's just done so well for us in the past. This is garlic that we harvested this past summer, so it is probably like four to five months old right now. And I think they say that hard neck garlic only lasts a few months, but I have pretty good success getting ours to last through most of the winter. Um, and you can see these garlic bulbs are very large or garlic heads are very large. So I'd say that we have really good luck with these. And I'll go ahead and open one of these up so you can see what it looks like because we're going to have to peel all of this garlic anyway to plant the individual cloves. And I've done like more detailed descriptions about the difference between hard neck and soft neck garlic in the past. So I'm not going to get too much into it today but I will link our previous garlic videos if you're curious to see that. So here are what the individual cloves look like. A lot of the cloves tend to be very large for this variety and I think for a lot of hard neck varieties as well. So here are a few pretty decent sized ones and we're going to be planting these individual cloves like this with the root side facing down pointy side up and I think I saved 10 heads of garlic from our summer harvest and if each head gives us 10 cloves then we should have at least 100 heads of garlic for next year's crop which I think will be a good amount for us we'll probably end up with more I think that each of these heads has more than 10 maybe like 10 to 12 so anything 100 and up I think will be good for us and if there are any like really small cloves of garlic like usually towards the center we'll keep those as like a backup if we have space we want to fill up in the bed but otherwise you really want to stick to planting the largest cloves possible because the larger the clove you start with generally the larger the head of garlic you're gonna get for next year as far as the actual growing process for the garlic you plant it usually in the fall we've done anytime as early as September like mid-September here um, to as late as you could probably even go into December where we are it is mid-November right now which I think is a pretty good time we've already gotten our first frost and we started clearing out some of the plants that have died so it's a great time to use that space that is newly emptied out in your garden I used to do it earlier but then I realized that there was no need to rush as long as your ground isn't frozen in, you'll have enough time to plant your garlic and from there it's really low maintenance I think the only thing is to make sure you have really good soil put down a layer of compost and then fertilize once or twice in the spring and early summer before you harvest because garlic is a heavy feeder so if you ever have like smaller garlic heads the problem probably I would say is that you didn't fertilize them enough because they do need a lot of fertilizer 
we just put a layer of compost on these beds so I think we're good to go and then I will do fertilizer once they start growing more in the spring. And as far as pests go, I would say garlic is pretty easy to manage. They are supposed to be deer resistant. I did have one year where the deer came and nibbled the tops off of the garlic. So I wouldn't say it's like foolproof that deer will not touch it. So just keep an eye on it. But generally they don't like love garlic so they won't really go for it. And I think the same goes for a lot of different animals as well like squirrels, rabbits, that kind of thing. And then the only thing that I have to keep an eye on is that this year we have had trouble with onion flies on a lot of our alien crops. So I don't think I've talked about this too much but a lot of the onions we harvested they did have a lot of onion fly larvae that were infested in them and I have seen a lot of the flies flying around this summer and at the time I didn't know what they were I'll put a picture up on the screen if you ever see these they are no good and it wasn't too much of a problem on my garlic crop because the onion flies were attacking mostly like my onions and my leeks shallots that kind of thing but because I did notice that we had a big problem with that this year I'm assuming that next year there is only going to be more of this fly around our property and they lay their eggs in the spring so in the spring I think I am going to have to cover my garlic crop to make sure the onion flies don't get to my garlic and lay those eggs and this has only been a problem for us after growing onions and garlic for three or four years in a row now if you've never grown anything like that in your garden you probably wouldn't have to worry about it but just keep an eye out for that like black and white striped fly if you see it it might attack your garlic as far as my experience goes those are the only things that might touch your garlic but generally it is very easy to grow and to take care of so yeah first step is going to be to peel all of our heads of garlic into the individual cloves so that's going to be the first step All right, so this first bed in our garden here is where we're going to be planting our garlic. I have already cleared out most of the stuff and I've also added a pretty good layer of compost on top. I do have one carrot that I need to pull out here. I think it's pretty big, so we'll dig that out. Um, and then, yeah, I put on a pretty nice thick layer of compost. This is actually some of our homemade compost that looks so good. I always get so excited when I have like some of our own compost to put on top of the soil. It's so cool. And that's gonna provide some good nutrients for the garlic as it grows. And this is a three by eight foot bed. You can see I have a little bit of kale on the left side. So I'd say that the area that we're actually going to be using is maybe like three by five. And I do think we're gonna be able to fit a hundred heads of garlic in here. So you can fit a lot of garlic in a pretty reasonable amount of space. We're gonna even out the soil, lay out all of our cloves, and then from there they just have to be buried four to six inches down into the soil. And probably at some point we'll add a layer of mulch over this as well. And I think that's gonna be all there is to it. Can you dig it? Yeah, big one. Oh, that big. I see it. Wow. Oh. I think you need to break it up closer. It's really big. Yes. You can go through it. <laughs> Whoa! The 
this doesn't look violent at all. They don't look like a professional. Just stabbing with the nice fall sunset behind you. <laughs> Homestead things. <laughs> Alright, so we've got our garlic planted. We have just over a hundred cloves in the ground and we do have some extra cloves in here, probably about a dozen or so. So we'll look around probably later this week and see if we have any empty spaces. We can stick the rest of these cloves into the ground. Otherwise, we can just eat them. But it feels good to have the bulk of our garlic planted. It's getting harder to be outside now that it's getting so chilly. So it feels good to get this done before it gets too, too cold. So that's gonna be it for this video. Again, don't forget to leave a comment down below or head to Instagram to ask us a question and we will answer some or all of your questions in a future video. Thank you for helping us get to 10,000 subscribers and just for continuing to watch us and our videos.